I'm, I'm serious. And a PC gaming, we need to see the PC gaming conference now. Uh, I have a minute left. I'm sorry that I, I gotta watch the, this immediately afterwards. I can talk about Ubisoft more, but it'll be what it is. And uh, yeah. Yeah, let me pop up Red Bull or something. <clears throat> Are you ready? Fuck, I wanna watch that, that Fist of the North Star trailer again. Oh man, oh boy. Shindeiru. Um... So what, what do you, what are we expecting out of PC gaming show, huh? You know, you know what we're getting? Dwarf Fortress 2. Well, there might actually be some stuff here I, I might really like. Uh, it's a very broad thing, just like PC gaming as a whole. Um, so there's gonna be probably like computer graphics stuff, you know, technology, and maybe some hardware stuff. There is magic in PC gaming. Magic. <laughs> It says, don't just obey the <gasps> rules. Wait, what the? Write them. What it the says, fuck was that about? Just listen to stories. What the fuck was that about? Inhabit them. There is... It says... They showed a doom wad on this? Overclock beyond it them. says... Oh, shut up. It I, had, says, I had dual. just play games. Revel in them. Unleash them. Got that. Thanos. It says, Dabbing. Seriously. Is every game battle royale now? <laughs> or is it just me? From mountaintops to dungeons, from deep waters to deeper space. They know. From solo quests to mass engagements. There is magic in PC gaming. Let's celebrate that magic together. This is the PC gaming show. Oh, wah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I can't get it louder, guys. This is as loud as it fucking goes. Oh, hello, hello, hello to everyone online. Hello to everyone at the Will Turn. Welcome to the PC Gaming Show. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yes. Yes. My name's Day Nine. I'm your host today. Sound all right, guys? Delighted to be here. We have a fantastic show for you this is one of these shows so. first uh -oh. all of you came out to the Wiltern thanks for joining us the Wiltern is just a beautiful venue here in Los Angeles to all of you online on Twitch thanks for joining us to those co-streaming partners hey as well I'm talking to you drop frames great to have you here and of course ha, 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 ha. to all the wonderful sponsors that help make the piece you know what this kind of reminds me of come back again Be for the fourth straight year now Be good on you now, I'm not the only host here this year. I have my co-op partner up in the balcony. It's Frankie Ward joining us today. How's it going, Frankie? Hey, Sean. I'm going to be up here in the balcony with a bunch of creative new PC games. Is this on Twitch? Maybe, maybe the YouTube... Because like, this is so fucking quiet. Like, th whoever, whoever is doing this on, on YouTube Frank, is doing a terrible piss-poor job. Because so I can't hear anything. So we have over 30 games we're going to be looking at across the next 90 minutes. So let's get it underway. Our very first title is from Coffee Stain Studios. There I think I'm going to get a Twitch link instead. Massive construction as well as automation. Let's hope this is better. Is it PC Gamer? What, what, what's the channel called? Well, it's a head anyway. Okay, let, let me let me let me get this right for you. I missed a little bit, but but here here we go. We're gonna have a, a louder link, all right? And hopefully it's better. Yes. Is this better, guys? It's like the same. <laughs> it's the same. They're also quiet. Oh, whatever. Just turn it up in m Windows Mixer. Well, it's at full. Wow, 
Well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do instead. Uh, either you can watch this yourself on just the raw audio here, or watch me commentate over it, because... You know what I mean? Essentially, that's why you're here, to also hear me speak and, like, talk about this, so, you know... It'll have to do. This looks good. So is this game called again? Cat Tail or whatever? I mean, it looks alright, I guess. But what about Dwarf Fortress 2? Oh, Satisfactory. Joining me on the stage to talk about it is the game director at Coffee Stain Studios. It's Oscar Gilsey. But well, you guys can hear this. I mean, come on. Come here, Oscar. Oscar! Welcome to the stage. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Now, Oscar, I just want to begin right away by asking, what is Satisfactory all about? Satisfactory is uh, essentially about building these huge automated factories. Uh, so you play as a, an engineer that's been sent from Earth uh, to this alien planet, and you're going to build this enormous machine. Uh, it's, let's enter that Fucking sweet. The the trailer there. Fucking yeah, yeah. sweet. Uh, sweet to build, you need a, a of parts. Uh, I can hear your Swedish accent. Machines. Don't try to hide it. So you'll start out you know, simple. you look like uh, an embarrassment if you do. Yeah. And then you'll just expand and expand I hate these Swedes. I hate them all. You need to start cutting down I hate Swedes. Replace them with like more convenient concrete. <laughs> And, you know, for people who haven't played this type of game, can you give me an example of what producing a more advanced resource might look like? Right. Um, after a while, you'll need to create something uh, more advanced, like a computer, for yeah. example. Uh, and you'll, at that point, you'll have some copper stuff set up, your wires and cables. But yeah. to make plastic, you need to uh, get some oil. So you need to go out and find this we oil. We got that crafting, uh, y'all. Build some oil pumps and oil refineries and, and set up a transport um, with self-driving vehicles between the outpost and your factory. Yeah, and I want to talk about that scale because, I, you know, there's a lot of games where you build a house or a small town. How much area are we talking I'm, about? I'm going to yell at Stockholm right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open my, uh, I'm gonna this, open my uh, window and yell at him directly. Because uh, that they're not that far part, away. Which probably be the biggest. We'll start spreading more and more. Hey, Stockholm, you stink. I hate you. I'm going to throw all the fish at you. I'm going to hit Oscar in his head. The, um, hey, that was not very nice. Now I will cancel my game and you will not play my video gom. You will. You are very stinky. Get out of here. And I'll reply, no, I do not like your game. It has no loot crate. Worth the fuck? You've built a bunch of stuff and you can see these enormous buildings, structures towering above you. But also when you go out and explore, uh, you'll be <sighs> in the, the underbrush and in the jungles yeah. and whatever. I mean, in the trailer, it even looked like there's a lot more to explore, like different environments and biomes. Mm, yeah, yeah, the, the map is, uh, we made a point to make it big. And Guys, we, fucking, yeah, uh, and it's, it's I swear to God, we have seen... Uh, next year, I'm just gonna have my own little personal like checkoff list. How many Swedes can I count? And if it's more than 10 Swedes, oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I will eat my own head. You'll basically you'll I'm not even kidding about that. I will attempt to eat my own head live now, on stream. Us, how do we get our hands on this game? So we got a closed alpha uh, planned in the coming months. Uh, so you can sign up for uh, for the alpha at satisfactorygame.com. Uh, and yeah, then you'll know. Well, great, Oscar. Thanks for joining me on stage once again. That is satisfactorygame.com. Now, up in the balcony, Frankie, I understand you have our very first indie title of the day. We do indeed, Sean, because here's something we love about the PC platform. It's such fertile ground for creative ideas from small teams. Neo Cab is an emotional survival game set in the future about gig labor, tech disruption, and the experience of being a driver for hire. Perhaps the last of your kind. <gasps> from the brand new indie studio, Chance Agency, let's watch the first gameplay trailer for Neo Cab. Neato. World exclusive. Okay. Wait, did you, did you say Neopets? <laughs> Guys, why does this look like a mobile porn game? <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> 
Cyberpunk 2077, the Born Edition. You, you Uber drivers here. From the future. You know what this game reminds me of? Fucking, where is it? I'm trying to find it. Oh, here we go. Adam. Now, Adam. Believe it or not, Brenda. Brenda. Battle Royale genre. <laughs> of course, it's E3 2018. What do you expect? We have several Battle Royale games we're going to be talking about today because the Battle Royale format is very simple and very flexible. Oh, Players God. Could you shut the fuck up about this? This is funny at first, but now shut the hell up. Last standing. So developers have already been doing all kinds of different explorations of what this could possibly be. And our very first Battle Royale game that we'll be introducing today has up to 1,000 concurrent players. It's from Automaton Games. Let's look at Maverick's Proving Ground. I can't tell if it's ironic or it's like sincere at this point. It's like, ha ha, we hate Battlegrounds. Ha ha, here's a Battlegrounds game. Ha ha ha. Like, what what kind of layer of ironing are, are we on now? Like, it's it's so deep that I'm like confused. Who's joking? Hey guys, loot crates confirmed! Yay! Hey guys, no loot crates in this game! Yay! Oh my fucking head! It's a thousand layers of irony. I, I don't I don't know who. No, this, this is sincere though. This, this wasn't a joke. This is legitimately battle royale. Hey guys, I found a, I found a way better uh, song for your epic trailer. Don't worry, and he, he's he's affordable, cheap, and will do it for like a cent. Is it better? <sighs> this game plays look a little fake. I don't know about you, but this that didn't look like gameplay. It looked like a little uh setup. James. James, welcome. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Now, I want to immediately ask, what about Prove, or excuse me, Maverick's Proving Grounds <coughs> distinguishes itself from other Battle Royale games? Yeah, well, as you said, it's a very popular formula, and yeah. you know that last man standing uh, kind of game type is incredibly compelling by itself. But Wait a Maverick's is really about depth. Wait a minute. We talked about 400 players before, and we're sort of Super excited today to talk about our five matches Son, being is that you? players. Uh, but really, it's it's about depth as well. It's about mini Todd. The environment is even a bigger step. Rod Howard is finally able to get on stage. Finding together. Yeah, I, I want to zoom in right on the 1,000 players aspect. How does that really shift the dynamic from the say 100 that we're typically used to? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really about combining scale with the depth of simulation. So the fact that together. What you actually have is a landscape that means you're making decisions of a lot more information. Yeah, I, mean, I hate to say this, but this looks really bad. Like, there's some bad stink about this. Like, it, 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 it's arriving too late, and it's offering nothing but more. More of the same, but more. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's like a recent history of who could have been here. Uh, you know, I want to ask about what more is in store for Maverick's Proving Grounds. I understand that this is a lot more out-game features than someone might expect. 
Yeah, so it's not just that session-based gameplay, you enter the game through the capital, which is our sort of persistent social hub. So we draw from the MMORPG side of things, it's really a, right. it's a full world, not just a map. You know, so it's, it's got a persistent game type side to it too. Yeah. But really it's about bringing this all together into something which makes a much richer MMO experience. Now, where can people go to find out more? Well, we've just launched our site right now, so if you're right. interested in signing up for the closed beta, uh, you can do that now at mavericks.gg. Beta. Closed hyphen beta. And uh, actually, if you register this week, Root we get special in-game content for free from E3. Awesome. And we have only 100,000 slots for the first... <laughs> Fake it through some... So hey, that's my job. Access, but cool. I'm sure there are a lot more people than that on the stream, so... Cool, now go. Go off the stage. Well, Leave my stage. Thanks so much for joining us once again. That's maverick.gg. Our very next game helps showcase the extraordinary power of modders. Frankie, tell us about it. It does <gasps> indeed, Sean. On PC, we don't just play what's given to us. We mod games to make our Your shirt ripped open. And for many developers, modding Don't worry, I'll look. I'll cover my eyes. But you must have to dress got damaged or it's something. I don't know. It's a game that's a reimagining of a wildly successful mod. In fact, the first mod in history to win a National Writers Guild Award. Brutal for doom. The first time ever. Here's gameplay from the Forgotten City. What? Uh, what, what did they win? I'm so sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, but that you'll suffer the same fate I did. Is that Bempis I saw in the statue? Lifetime in this place, an ancient underground city. Its existence long forgotten. Searching. Oh, this is an amnesia mod, okay. All I found is a window into the past. If even one person hey. commits a sin, Steve Blum here. Everyone will die. Spike Spiegel here. I tried to set things right, but whatever I did, it took me right back to the beginning. It's all up to you now. Go back, investigate, talk to everyone, help them out if it'll win their trust. See that NPC? Figure out who's responsible Talk to this. And maybe you can do what I never could. Save these people. Save yourself. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Drink some water. Interesting. I did not I didn't I didn't even know about this amnesia mod, but What's next for Killing Floor 2? Oh yeah, dude. An unannounced game from Tripwire <gasps> Interactive. <gasps> and now your host, Sean Plot. Our next game is a blast from the past. It's not a sequel or prequel or remake, but rather an entirely new game altogether. Let's <gasps> take a look at Stardock's Star Control Origins. <gasps> what? Star Control! The singularity formed. Its creators uplifted into something beyond... Motherfucking Star Control?! These beings, now known as the Lexites... What the fuck?! Earth, ...traveling to multiple planets in our solar system before vanishing altogether. This is why we are here. Welcome to Star Control. Holy shit. International Space Agency. Holy shit. Tasked with the exploration of our solar system. Are we going to see Urquan and then Korra? Of Earth. Here resides the world's brightest minds and greatest technology. Someone wake me up. Together by a strong curiosity to discover the unknown. Help us pioneer the future. Join today. Oh my god! Fucking Star Control! What?! Oh my god, really? Star Control has accelerated the construction of our new modular deep solar system vessel. Holy shit! For this mission. It's the fastest, most expensive. Oh my god. Wake me up, please. I am Chief Viscosity Officer Windu of the Time. The Scribe had evidently Can I get some spotty in here? Of your radio oh, the thief, the thief back. Are they still Korra? And like Urquan? Oh my god. I'm actually super excited for this. Yeah, show the ores. It's like, kind of like Spore almost. I'm, I'm fucking really excited for this. A new alien in a 
delightful new spaceship. You must be humans. We've heard so much about you. Any of the oil aliens in there? Let me see. Origins. Well, I hope we can see some of the old aliens. I, I, I don't know. Can, can I get the uh, fuck? I forgot what the spiders are called. Human. Human. Star Control is the director of production at Star Doc, Patrick Shaw. Thanks for joining me on stage today, Patrick. Oh my God. So now, just tell us straight up, what is Star Control all about? So Star Control is an open universe action RPG. You can visit dozens of aliens, hundreds of different stars, thousands of different unique planets, and you can land on each and every one of them. And when you're driving around the planets, you can jump over canyons, uh, blast critters, and then you can venture out into the solar system and do ship-to-ship -ship combat with hostile aliens. And I, I want to ask, since I know that the story is a big part of this game, with it being open world, how do you make sure that the story still stays as the focus for the player? Yeah, so we're really excited about the story that we prepared for Star Control. It's funny, it's creative, um, but also has some dark, uh, sinister side to it. However, what we're very proud and very excited about is we have an infinite universe. That is, we are fully simulating the entire universe at all times. So even if you're on some oh. podunk little moon in the corner of the universe, the aliens are still moving around the universe, doing their own thing, exploring and interacting with each other. So it's not just like at a planet, there's the same town whenever you visit it. It depends on how the simulation is driven it forward. Right, exactly. So this is the this uh, infinite universe is the glue that connects my story, my adventure to the larger open galaxy. That's awesome. Now I know modding is going to be a big part of Star Control. Origins. Oh my God, they How got the combat. Work? So what's your favorite science fiction show? Probably Firefly. Yeah, so what would you think of making Firefly season two? Shit, that's a lot of pressure, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're putting me on the spot on stage right now, yeah. We Sitting on the Star Trek. Yeah, do it, so. um, but anyways, in Star Control Origins, you can create your own ships, your own planets, your own galaxies. You can package up your adventures and share them with your friends online. So someone else can take care of Firefly season two. That's up to you. Now, last thing I want to ask about is how multiplayer works. Ask if the Urquan is back. We have ship to ship combat, and that turned about to be so popular in our early testing. They're like, we should make this a separate gameplay mode. So we did. We called it Fleet Battles. So you can create your own ships, you build them out of different pieces and parts. It's pretty cool, actually. Weapons and defenses, and then you go online to play them. You can either play local multiplayer, two people on the same machine, <laughs> or online, ranked or online. Play. Where can people go to pick up Star Control Origins? Well, right now, Star Control Origins is available for pre-order on GOG and Steam. Well, I might actually get this. Guys, definitely be sure to head over to Star I fucking Control love Game. Star Control. And check them out on Steam and GOG as well. And one more thing, we are happy to announce at the PC Gamer Show that uh, Star Control Origins is launching on September 20th, 2018. Okay. On September 20th. Interesting. Uh... Uh, I love Star Control. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Our next game was PC Gamer's favorite game from E3 last year. It is Hunt Showdown from Crytek. Let's take a look at what's coming for Hunt Showdown just after E3. Got that crisis now. <laughs> you, can immediately, you can immediately tell when I'm like happy for something and then I'm just like, the air gets sucked out of me. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> we need more like earthy vocals. is not about to go out of fashion any time soon. Guy, now Hellfire, in fact, sorry, Archangel, was originally a single player narrative game, but Hellfire, this new edition, what changes is that gonna make? Well, players really loved the single player narrative, but they all kept telling That looks like John Cena. They said, we really want it multiplayer, and we want it off rails. And we kind of thought, that's a completely different game, <laughs> but let's give it a shot. Uh, and so we got a crack team together. Uh, they put something really special. We got four maps, we got six different mechs, 
tons of weapons where you could just blast through the environment and other mechs alike. And it's really just an amazing experience. You can zip around in your mech, you can tower over others. It's just something special. That and I can when try right now. is this coming out of early access? So you just said we can try it right now, but you've got the full version launching soon, right? Correct. Yeah, it's coming I can't out in increase oh, a little bit. Uh, but you can try it right now if you want an early access. But I, I can't get the, the stream any louder. I'm sorry. Bring some mechs along the process. I am no good at ironing out kinks, as I think people at home can see, Guy, but as a heavy mech woman, I can't wait for you to be my light mech wingman in that 2v2 PvP. So let's take a closer Dude, look what? at Archangel <laughs> Hellfire. What? Stop hitting the button to, like, make that sound. Bamp! Bamp! <gasps> Can I finally, like, emulate, like, the feeling of Armor Core 2? Not really. I can't get the ladder. I can't get the stream ladder. I've said this a hundred times now. Our next title is one I've been looking forward to for quite some time. It's from the makers of Sherlock Holmes, and it's a delightful-looking Lovecraftian mystery. Who's this? It's called The Sinking City, and joining me to talk about it is the community manager at Frogwares. Is this Sergei guy, like, really Logan. tall or something? Welcome, Sergey. Thanks for joining me today. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you've earned a handshake. Yeah, you Welcome nailed that pronunciation. Today. I love that you lie to me so kindly. <laughs> you know, I want to ask right away, The Sinking City, you know, there's a lot of open-world, third-person type games. What makes The Sinking City different from what a player might expect? Well, I mean, The Sinking City is an open-world action investigation game inspired by Lovecraft. And we believe that these three elements already make the game pretty unique. And you know, when I say that you can be a detective in a, in a world, in a supernatural world full of mystery and, you know, cosmic fear, like, I really mean it, because investigations are really at the core of The Sinking City. Yeah, I mean, I know... There's a lot of games in the open world genre that are focused on action, but you say investigation is at the core. What, what are investigation mechanics? What does it look like? So the first thing you should know right off the bat is that we are not going to offer any hand holding for the player. We will not give you any clear objectives in your diary or, you know, markers on the map telling you where to go or what to do. It's actually up to you. <laughs> to I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. That joke was really stupid. Hints, evidence, like clues, crime scenes to examine, like people to talk to, suspects to question. And we will ask you in return to use your wits and your intuition to, you know, experiment with your findings, you know, maybe like find a way how to progress. And what you should also know is that finding these clues will not only help you understand what's going on and, you know, uh, yeah. get a better understanding of the world and its people, but it will also help you maybe change the course of your investigation. You know, you mentioned the world itself. I mean, the footage that I've seen through the years has just been absolutely beautiful. Talk to me about the world that we're in and what investigation is at the core. So the game takes place in this fictional city of Oakmont in the state of Massachusetts. You know, the city which is flooded, there is a terrible disaster going on which has claimed like thousands of lives. And also, like, it seems like it awakened frightening monsters which now yeah. roam the streets of Oakmont. You know, people that live in the city, they are very different, like different social classes, uh, gangs, cultists. Poor that was a so, that, that was a different social class. It's a spider like, spider they're man. All afraid, maybe except for the cultists, of course. They are all afraid that uh, you know for their lives because of the flood, because of the monsters. And you know, we actually want to understand what's going on. We want to understand what lies be behind this ostensibly supernatural uh, Force. flood. And what's even funny is that while everybody is afraid, nobody wants to leave. But this is kind of a different story. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, we've talked a little bit about the story world and how it's inspired by Lovecraft. What about the game mechanics? You've mentioned the sanity mechanic in the past. Indeed, we do have a sanity mechanic which oh, directly impacts gameplay. Eternal darkness? You know, when our hero is under a lot of stress, when he sees like something supernatural, something destroyed. I know who else is under, under a lot of different stress. Story which he's not comfortable with making, uh, you know, he will begin to lose his sanity. Uh, he's like, he will start to have hallucinations, he will start to hear distorted sounds. Yeah which will allow the player to understand that something is actually going wrong. Maybe we need to, you know, step back and do something about that. As of right now, we're still fine-tuning this mechanic because we are still looking, you know, for the sweet spot between yeah. impact on the gameplay and impact on the story. Since we're almost out of time, I still just have to ask, what are the sweet monsters that we're going to get to see in the game? Oh, we have different kinds of monsters. We have different kinds of archetypes, you know, with different abilities. And, you know, we actually give you tools. The game is not about fighting monsters. Investigation is the right. core of the game. But we give you tools to defend yourself. So we give you weapons, we give you skills, we give you even cer certain, like, traps. In return, we ask you that yeah. you make a decision, because the game is about making a decision. 
uh, ammunition scars, and you will have to adjust your tactics accordingly. So I know a lot of people have all sorts of questions about what the game is like. Where can they go to find out more information? Uh, so if you're hungry for more, you can always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, this is where we post our updates regularly. Facebook, The Sinking City Game. YouTube, uh, Frogware. <coughs> uh, so go there, and yeah. like, this is definitely the place to go if you want to learn more. Well, I'm super excited personally to see how it turns out. Thanks for joining me on stage, Sergey. The Sinking City. This guy is so now, tall. Our next game is a PC title that I has love only gotten better over the last few years, and I'm always excited to hear what they have in store. Frankie is up on the balcony with the developers of Warframe. Talk to me, Frankie. Well, oh, Warframe. we all know the PC is home to some of the most devoted communities in gaming, and one of the best undoubtedly belongs to Warframe. Last year, the game got its first open world update, Planes of Eidolon, and the next epic cinematic quest is called The Sacrifice. And we've got the exclusive launch trailer for you. Blood and gore. Okay, no, no more fucking shoot with Taylor on these trailers. I, I, that was the last time. I'm a man of my word, and I would never do that again. Cool. Megan Everett, community manager at Digital Extremes, joins me now. Megan, tell me more about The Sacrifice. So The Sacrifice is the latest installment of our cinematic quest. It continues a story that we started in The Second Dream, continued with The War Within, and then Apostasy Prologue. So at the end of last year, we kind of shattered some hearts and uh, left them with a bit of a plot twist. And I'm not going to spoil it for people who want to maybe catch up. Uh, but what I can say is that, obviously, from the trailer that you saw, the wait for Umbra, the three-year wait, the Umbra Warframe is finally over. Uh, the creepy guy at the end of the trailer there, Ballas, plays a pretty big role in this quest. And, uh, again, not going to spoil a lot, but I can say that it's coming this week on PC. And you guys are actually currently waiting. I'm trying to fix your shirt. Well, as well as the update, you're working it ripped. There, there we go. Right now. Yes, so it's going to be there we go. another we won't be, oh, oh, nope, year ripped open again. and I'm really excited for it. Well, let's take a look at last year's event to get an idea of what Tenacon is all about. What do you think the mega reveal at Tenno Live is going to be? Can you tell uh, me? Hello, 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 my name, my name, Bob. Like it's a whole new direction for Warframe and all this. Uh, you got all these other games coming out. But I can't believe they got free. PewDiePie to be in this. 2018 happening. Get it started. Given that the community knows you as Auntie Megan, oh God. it must be huge for you to be at Tenacon. Tenacon is really special for really everyone that works at Digital Extremes. The developers pour their heart and soul into what we do for TennoCon and... Did you get more YouTubers me, to be in trailer? I'd be there. I'd be like, I love your game. I know Rebecca, our community director at home, is watching. I love um, your game. But last year when we did the Planes of Eidolon, you know, open world expansion reveal, uh, Rev and I were actually doing that as a live demonstration in front of everyone. And we had practiced it for months and it went as flawlessly as we could have ever hoped for. And we actually, like, as people were cheering, it's pitch black on stage. Rev and I look at each other and we just kind of fist pump and both started crying because we didn't crash the demonstration. Mm. Uh, so if you, wa <laughs> if you watch Ten Alive this year, if you're there, uh, you can definitely probably count on some tears and some emotions because it's, it's a really big day for us. So basically, bring tissues, right? Bring tissues for yourself, for me, for everyone involved. Because <laughs> for Joel, too. Tears, probably. But until Sad. you can't get to Tenacon because unfortunately it is sold out, how can you watch it online? So on twitch.tv slash Warframe, you can definitely check it out. And uh, PC Gamer is also hosting as well on their Facebook and Twitter. And you get free stuff by watching Twitch? <laughs> you do. So if you want to link your uh, Warframe account to your Twitch account, and mm -hmm. all you have to do is watch and get free stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. So that's happening from July 7th. And you'll be able to watch Tenacon live through PC Gamer's Twitch channel and the Facebook page. Thank you, Auntie Megs. Oh. Sean, it's over to you. Thank you, Frankie, and thank you, Warframe.
All right, tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna lower my volume on my microphone so you can so you can blast your ears with the uh, you, you do your own sound mixing at this point. There now 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 maybe it's a little bit better. I don't know. On the left. Sega's bringing shining resonance How's this? PC better? and console the same day, and Shenmue is going to come <gasps> later this year. They have all sorts of games coming up. Let's take a look at what Sega's got in store. Oh, fuck. What do you got for me? Oh, Nani. Oh! Okay. Bayonetta. Oh, Vanquish is a good game, too. Put your, put your Tetris. All right. Yeah! Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! I don't know what this is, but all right. We're doing gacha pawns today. Okay. Wait, on PC? Yakuza on PC? What the fuck? On PC? You put a Yakuza on PC? Hold up one fucking second. What? On PC? God damn, man. Yeah, what else? What else we got? <sighs> My God! Well, Sega actually showing some love to the PC after all these like exclusive games. Is this Kiwami 2? Oh hell! But I'm all, I'm all like I'm I'm so dumb with Yakuza. I can't be. Oh God damn it! Don't rope me back. Oh, you can do like karaoke duel mode. Oh, arcade games are in this. Oh no! Don't don't do this to me. Oh, this is zero. Okay. Okay. Fortunately, no fist. Oh, okay. Zero on PC, huh? Okay. Sega. Yakuza Zero is available for pre-order right now, and will be releasing on Steam in early August. We hope you've been enjoying. Oh the shit, show guys! This two far. months. We have so much more great stuff to come. Let's see what's coming up at this year's PC gaming show. Play Zero, you fuck. Oh, I'll try. Coming up on the PC Gaming Show, a new publisher reveals three new games, and the first ever gameplay footage of Overkill's The Walking Dead. And now your host, Sean Plot. And I'm back. Yeah, I watched the PC Gaming Show for the plot. Our next guest is a regular here at the PC Gaming Show, having attended all four years. Frankie's with him up in the balcony. It's Tripwire. Sean, if you are anything like me, you probably need to let off steam every once in a while. And I personally can't think of a better way to do it than by kicking back and tearing up a load of monstrous enemies. I thought it was it's like Rich Evans either first. Either that or pushing the office photocopier out of the window. And I, for one, prefer the option that keeps me and everyone here in a job. With that in mind, I am thrilled to welcome Bill Monk from Killing Floor 2 back to E3. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> Got a lot of fans in the audience, oh, yeah, Bill. Yeah. Listen to that applause. Yeah. They all want to know what the latest from Tripwire and Killing Floor 2 is. I have played Killing Floor, yes. We've been really busy working on Killing Floor, and we got some, uh, we got four major updates that are coming out this year. The first one we dropped in March, and we're getting ready to drop the next one really soon. coming tomorrow, Bill. What's involved? Yeah, so we're bringing the summer sideshow back, but this time we're mixing Circus Freaks with Steampunk in a really fun, exciting way. And we have a really cool new uh, system that we're adding. It's called the Weapon Upgrade System. And with this, there's 73 different weapons that we have in our game, and each one you can uh, upgrade it and make it viable for late play. So it really adds a lot of creativity to your loadout. So I'm really excited to get that in people's hands. So you can make your boy bu your boy guns big. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank today, you. Bill. Let's take a look at the trailer for Treacherous Skies Summer Shy Show. She's too professional for this show, I think. It's odd seeing someone so, like, sincere what they're trying to, like, do. Welcome 
Welcome aboard the HMS Queen Victoria, ladies and gents. Ringleader Lockhart speaking to you from... Uh, what am I listening to? What is this? Well, very safe, yes. You helped me escape that fray at my beloved Steamland. But now I need your help once again. I've got to get to my island in the channel. Now, now, listen up. I don't know how, but these blasts... They got some fucking thrash metal for this. Follow us on board. I think it's time to put on a show yes, of daring deeds and horrendous bloodshed. Oh, for me, my mechanical children have turned against me. <laughs> Plastic traitors, careful lads, they're tough. Even removing the head won't put these rebellious robots down. It really reminds me of like Mark Hamill for Joker, you know. Lads and lasses, I have invented some new toys. The Doomstick. All barrels are better than two. The Static Strikers. A shockingly stylish set of gauntlets. And the M99 Sniper. A rifle. And finally, there's a last minute addition to the crew. What's this? I wish the new Doom had this kind of soundtrack. Foster negotiated her way on board and is set on giving Zen like the angry. The business. And remember, we'll see you on the airship. But it did no, it did not. Fossey, it had a lot of you. gent in it Optician and not enough metal. My eyes are okay. I say, then how do you explain my husband? <laughs> Now, <laughs> as is tradition, the content that you just saw will be available tomorrow, including a free weekend for PC this weekend. Definitely check it out with Killing Floor 2. But that's not all that Tripwire has. I have the president of Tripwire himself, John Gibson, on stage. John, welcome back again. Thanks, Sean. Pleasure to be Don't here. Don't make me do this now, joke again. Don't, do not let Tripwire me get away with this joke again. To also doing publishing. What does that entail? That's right. So, Sean, it's really challenging for developers right now with the thousands of games that are coming out every year. Yeah. It's really hard to get noticed. Mm -hmm. And then you have the traditional publishing deals. So, <laughs> oh, whoops. Uh oh, uh oh, wait a minute. Am I not drop? Um, am I dropping frames? No, no. Oh no. Oh God. Okay. Or, or, okay. This is Road Redemption. That is right. I'm happy to announce that we're going to be publishing Road Redemption. We're going to be helping them grow and succeed even more on Steam, but also bring the franchise beyond Steam. Now, I know today you have a world exclusive new game. Hasn't been announced we yet. We do. Yeah, no, man, I, I know this game. It's, it's fucking Road Rash. Give me a little bit of a tease. Yeah, so we're working with the team at Blindside Games, mm -hmm. uh, and they're led by Alex Quick. Oh, yeah, right. So if you're familiar with the Killing Floor universe, you know Alex Quick was the modder that created the Refresh original Duel. Killing Floor mod, okay. which Tripwire worked with Alex to bring commercial. Do what you want to. Each other, very, very successful. You happy now? But now it's come full circle. We're working with Alex again, and we're going to bring his all-new game to market. Well, let's take a look at it right now. World-exclusive new upcoming game from Tripwire. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Close your eyes and imagine a place where the sun is bright and the beaches are white. A place filled with southern charm where the water is as warm as the welcome. So come feel the wind in your sails. Kick back and relax. Enjoy the local cuisine. Your dream vacation is waiting for you here on the Gulf Coast. Are we getting a Jaws the game again? Guys, did I just play this? Go to maneatergame.com now to book your vacation. Operators are standing by. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hey, John. So you get to play as the shark. You are the shark. Uh, like Jaws, I played that game. <laughs> this is an open world action RPG where you play as a shark, <laughs> or as we like to call it, a shark PG. Oh, nice. Okay, so, so do you like Who's upgrade laughing? and improve the shark? Is there like skill trees? You do. There is a shark skill tree. <laughs> really? <laughs> There is a full single-player campaign. You eat your way through it. 
One you more, get one more. bigger teeth, you can jump out of the water and snatch people off piers and all of that fun stuff. I, I didn't realize this was a power fantasy I needed so badly. <laughs> now, where can people go to get more information about it? They can go to maneatergame.com. All right, I doubt anyone will forget that here. <laughs> That's maneatergame.com. John, thanks so much for joining me on stage. And once My again, pleasure. all the content that Tripwire <laughs> showcased earlier about Killing Floor 2 and Road Redemption will be playable here at E3. Definitely be sure to check it out. Coming up next, Frankie has a whole slew of unannounced games. Frankie. Cheers, Sean. Man eater looking tasty there, and I can't believe they made the game my favorite weekend activity. Indies are at the heart of PC gaming, and next up is a brand new publisher revealing three games for the very first time, releasing one of them, Behave Yourselves Audience, today. So let's take a look. Really? That's our name? Publishers are boring. But games and developers aren't. So... Ellipses. We're creating games for you. Starting right now. We're announcing one, two, three games today. And releasing one game right away. Enjoy. We'll get back to being boring. Well, all right. Oh, what's this? This is great. Ooh. But doesn't this look look like a barrel of fun? Neat. You know that untitled publisher logo? Looks like a little similar logo I once uh, might have seen. Stardew Valley 2. Reloaded. It's time to go back and finish what you started. install a turnip on my computer too. Oh hey now, what's this? Wow, oh, I like this. Oh that soundtrack though. Oof. Why do I like this so much? <laughs> you know, that title... That title I was gonna... Joke around a little bit about, but uh... I was not saying anything. All these games look like must-plays. And Overwhelm, the final game of the bunch, is available on Steam right now for <gasps> a special launch discount. So make you what? sure you check that out after the show. I might and do that. if you're at E3 this week, head over to the PC Gamer corner of the Facebook booth inside the South Hall to give Overwhelm a try. Right, next up, it's time for us all to take a holiday. And where better than a virtual resort with some truly spectacular wildlife? Back again this year, our friends of the show, Frontier Developments, with a unique take on the park management genre. 
But I nani. am, of course, talking about Jurassic World Evolution. The long-awaited game is out tomorrow. Oh, I thought it was Zoo Tycoon. Dinosaur stuffed tourist trap. What could possibly go wrong? Unleash the gold blum. <laughs> She's funny. You think that things are going to turn out differently, huh? Well, the ones before Jerry. did too. Because they believed that they were in control. And control... Well... Where? Here's the thing. Humanity is desperate for it. I thought the Velociraptor was the one, like, with the terrible <laughs> Goldblum voice. Deceived Whoop. by the illusion of it. But we never really possess it. Because if there's anything that chaos theory has taught us, it's that nature is on its own. If it's anything that chaos theory and when has we interfere, when humanity taught us to put nature into orderly boxes, chaos destroys them. And what makes us such unique creatures is knowing the scope and power what we're up against and still believing that we can win Title is from Insomniac, who've been making amazing games for years, and they're going to try to take their expertise and answer the question. Insomniac. How do you make an open world game in VR? Let's take a look at this VR, upcoming game, Storm. The game. next level. Do you remember the first of September? By the way. And give a new life to the world below. Insomniac Games presents. The future in gaming. Johnny Five is back in Short Circuit 2. Reloaded. Well, he's back. With an ambition to kill. <laughs> Different than Wally. Hmm. Wall. Wall Q. Wall B. Wall E2. Punish Johnny Five, a fallen legend. Can't tell if VR effect or like buffering. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Real time buffering. Frame. Sorry, that was a really poor, poor joke.
Joining me to talk about Stormland is the chief creative officer at Insomniac Games. Join me in welcoming Chad Desern. <laughs> Chad. Yo, what's up? My name's Chad. Okay. <laughs> hey, Chad, welcome to hey, the guys. stage. Thank you. I want to start right away and ask, what is this game all about? Well, in Stormland, you play as an android gardener. And uh, an entity called the Tempest uproots your habitat and shatters your android body. So you've got to travel to a civilization above the Thunderheads to repair I'm, I'm going to make this right, damn it, because Chad is the ultimate. And I want to ask what open world means in VR. Well, for us, <laughs> VR. it's about giving the player the ability to explore the world freely with a set of Android movement abilities that are designed to yeah. give you complete agency. Yeah, because that's always a huge question I have, is how does motion work in any VR title? Yeah, well, um, in Stormland, you can do things like fly just above the slipstream with your outstretched Android hands. Yeah. Um, you can shoot a laser into the cloud surface and then make a ramp, kick off of that, um, <gasps> climb up a cliffside, like literally launching yourself with your synthetic can I climb Android that strength. And then, like, push off and glide back down using your hands to control your descent. Just it's massive freedom of movement, yeah. Th that's it. It's this set of mechanics that are designed together to work fluidly so that um, movement feels exhilarating. Yeah. And uh, you, you can kind of take the world at your own pace with it. I'm curious, why VR for this type of title? There, there are a series of things that we're doing with Stormland that, that we could only So uh, is this one of those games VR. that has, like, um, it's about VR hands, like, glo VR gloves or whatever for the fingers? Or I don't get it. That how we use it for movement, um, even things like scavenging technology to attach it to your body. Like, you look down, you get a new piece of tech, and you, you attach it right into your <laughs> arm. And then, you know, suddenly you've got the ability to harness electricity yeah. or cloak yourself or all kinds of different cool Android abilities. I mean, the, the art is just beautiful in the footage that we've seen. I wonder if you can talk to me a little bit about the world and what it means for it to be ever-changing. Yeah, that's, that, that's a really good question. So that entity called the Tempest, rearranges everything every single week so that we present the player with new playgrounds of movement I don't really like varying sizes on these presentations tonight. And you never know what you're going to discover so every single island you find yeah. has the potential to ha hide an enemy stronghold or a network of underground caverns or brand new tech discoveries. Awesome. Who, who fell over? Now, you guys heard that? Ask, where can we go for more information? Somebody's died. Well, um, you can uh, stay tuned. Like they fucking uh, like watching, fell over. Um, the uh, the Facebook and Twitter with um, at Stormland VR. Or you can check us out at insomniac.games. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for joining me, Chad. Once again, oculus.com slash Stormland for more information. Frankie's up in the balcony with our next absolutely gorgeous looking indie title. It really is, Sean, because next up we've got a first look at a new game. He got, he got a flirt with her. And, and I was talking about the game. A Paris cabbie who finds himself oh, you're so sweet. into a world of crime. Sacre Roddy Bleu. Yes, I speak French. I can't wait for this one, so let's take a ride with the trailer. Baby, you are as beautiful as the most beautiful indie game. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> I love you. Well, doesn't this look cool? If you like that last game, you'll definitely love our next one. It's from the exact same publisher, Raw Fury. It's an open world narrative focused game with an incredible art style. Let's take a look at Sable. Neat. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I saw this on on, on a previous. Was it the Microsoft show? I, I don't know. Uh, or, or no, is this different? It's like a game that had very much this. No, no, that's the same. Maybe. Doesn't this game look nice, huh? I like this. This is pleasant to look at. Treat to the eyes. Man, if you put a filter on this game, <laughs> where you would take all the anti-aliasing out of it, or you rather like add it to it, it would just be like one smudge. No, I, I, I promise you, no more Shuby Taylor. I'm not gonna ruin this trailer. It's, it's too good. That was neat. Joining me to talk about Sable is. Pretty much the entire core development team on stage. It's Daniel Feinberg and Greg Kithriotis. I want to immediately ask, what kind of game is Sable? What can we expect? Uh, Sable is an open world desert exploration game. It's not a game about combat or about what, leveling what up. Mean? It's a game about solitude and it's a game about exploration. Uh, you play as Sable, a girl leaving her home uh, to explore this world filled with monumental architecture, fallen spaceships, and you'll travel around on your hover bike learning about the people, the culture, and the history of this. Oh, they're a band, okay. Uh, well, and you know, I, I, I talked about it before. I think this art style is amazing. Where's the origins of this? So we were really heavily inspired by the clear lines style of French and Belgian comics, mm -hmm. as well as Japanese animation, um, particularly Anime. Studio Ghibli. So um, we really want to feel our players to feel the same sense of wonder that you get from watching one of their films. And so from yeah. the very beginning, we, we knew that we really needed to nail the visual style. And uh, yes, yeah, so we put a lot of time and sort of effort into our right. rendering system. Uh, and yeah, we're really pleased to be able to show it to everyone. Yeah. And I mean, I know that you two consist of most of the core development, the, the art and the programming. What about the music that was in that trailer? Yeah, so that was a new track by Japanese Breakfast. Oh, yeah, the t-shirt. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, right. so she, uh, Michelle, um, she is doing the soundtrack for the game. Um, Japanese Breakfast is one of my favorite. We had, we had Rev on stage earlier well, on the uh, Ubisoft so thing. In the trailer, and I know now we have uh, uh, really Great Value Vinny. Updating, you know, blogs, sharing when is Great Value Joel is going to come on stage? Go uh, so they can go to our Twitter account, Shedworks Reg and Shedworks Dan, or to SableGame.com. Lovely gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me. Once again, the name of the game is Sable. He looks more like uh, Charlie Day than he does uh, Vinny, honestly. Even showing up in our very first PC gaming show. It's Cloud Imperium Games still hard at work on their title, Star Citizen. Let's see what they have in store. World exclusive. All right, boys, Star Citizen. We have become explorer again. We have resurrected mystery stone adventure. They paid me two dollars to do that. Featuring Varg Skeletor as the primary voice actor. Was this game like? I thought this game was got got released, and it was like people hated it because it was like not lived up to expectations or whatever. That was No Man's Sky. No, I know about New No Man's Sky. I know about uh, uh, that 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 guy, Sean Murray. I know about him. I'm saying this game. I thought this like got in early access or something, and people were like it did not live up to the hype. Something like I, I, I. People are just mad it took so long to come out. Okay.
Neat. Alpha 3.2. Coming up on the PC gaming show. All new gameplay footage of Just Cause 4. Oh, neat. A look at The Walking Dead. The mm. final season. All new gameplay footage of Hitman. And now your host, Sean Plot. So it's Sean Murray. As we do each year at the PC Gaming Show, in addition to talking about games, we're also going to talk about some of the upcoming hardware trends. To join me in talking about it is a senior brand manager from Acer. It's Eric Ackerson. Thanks for joining me up here, Eric. Sean, really excited to be here. Now, I, I just want to straight up ask, what are the, some of the big trends that consumers can be expecting right now? Well, right now we're developing some new products, particularly in the display space. We want to take the experience to the next level. To help with that, one of our new products is the Predator X27. It's an incredible gaming display. For instance, it's 4K and 120 hertz refresh. The users can overclock to 144. But what, re what really takes it over to the next level is the inclusion of G-Sync HDR. Yeah, now I hear a lot about HDR. Can you explain a little more in detail what that is and what that means? Well, there's a, quite a bit that goes into it, but uh, for the purpose of this conversation, the fact that there are 384 individual backlit zones, so the backlighting can be individually controlled, really bright, very dark. It makes a, a better contrast on screen. Each of them are individually controlled. The brightness of the screen is far above a typical display. Typical, you're looking at 300 to 400 nits. We're looking at 600 with the Predator X27 with a max of 1,000 nits. And you know, some of the titles that were showcased uh, just now, there's a wide variety of some photorealistic, some with a really iconic art style. How does HDR contribute to that big range we see in gaming? Well, one of the big things that helps is the color gamut that's available with these displays. We're able to do 99% <gasps> of the Adobe color gamut. So it's better representing the vision of the art director. Yeah, and some of the games that you see on screen that support HDR, Mass Effect Andromeda, Far Cry 4, and Nino Kuni 2. Uh, again, you won't see them in HDR right now unless you have an HDR monitor. It doesn't work that way. We can't just stream it to you. But, you know, it brings me to one of my next questions about PC gamers tend to have a huge range of possible budgets. What are the different sort of products to look for at those price ranges? One dollar. Well, I mean, we cover the, the gamut from uh, very simple and to the point to high performance esports products or multi-view surround multi-display products, but we also go really crazy sometimes. We decide, we put our engineers to the test, what can you do if you have yeah, no yeah. limit? So one of the projects we've worked on is something called We're the Predator proud of percent. This is a the 21 new generation in hardware uh, with a mechanical keyboard How do you and close two it graphics it cards. Hot Wheels PC. <laughs> we did, Enter we did really a new but, generation you know, to, to of serious, video games. Jokes, we actually have to ship this with a Pelican case to protect the laptop and it sells yeah. for nine thousand dollars and we sold every single unit we could make so we cover every spectrum of gaming you know you brought up this predator laptop you brought up the predator monitors at the start of this segment where can people guys if i bought a, if i bought an alienware pc back in like 2003 is it still like the hardest so the, computer the away, available shipping now our customers partners are so his camera was really drunk there's like oh fuck, where am i this new predator X27 monitor. I believe nope. Micro Center is still in stock. Amazon will be in stock again soon. Well, thank you so much for Absolutely joining me not. on stage, Eric. Oh, okay. Frankie is awaiting in the balcony with our very next title. The PC has always been the platform for crazy ideas. In our next game, Genesis Alpha 1, you build and manage a space vessel, farm resources, deal with terrifying alien infestations, and explore a vast, randomly generated universe. Oh, and you can take DNA from the aliens you encounter across the galaxy, splice them with members of your crew to create new life forms. Just a typical day at the office. Let's take a look. Greetings, Commander. You have been sent to Quadrant Alpha One. The mission is to find a new home for Man, the guys, on board of the here's ship. a drinking game for this year's E3. Expand your take a shot whenever explore it's a exploration, uh, exploration space forms. game that involves planets. Feel free to experiment with DNA and go 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 Dead. Ready your weapons. Liver damage. You know, I hate to say this, but it looks a little bit like Doom, which is a good thing, but... 
What a weird trailer. That's just that's it. Now, if you didn't catch the pre-show huh. quiz, you might be wondering who my buddy is. <gasps> this, ladies and gentlemen, is Webster from Drake's Cakes, one of the PC gaming show sponsors this year. Oh and he's got no! A cool competition for you: the Drake's Cakes Packs giveaway. Oh yes. Oh Packs no! Is a of PC and tabletop games, <laughs> concerts, panels, exhibits, and tournaments. It's like Keep a four-day LAN party festival uh, uh, that rolled into one. The very lucky winner will enjoy a yeah, pack of uh, tickets uh, 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 in Seattle. So if that's you, hit me uh, up on those dates because I am uh, 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 well, you got my man up. This is very generous of you indeed. And by entering, guys, you will get a discount code to get your hands on some delicious Drake's cakes available on Amazon. And if you're at E3 itself, don't forget you can meet Webster in person at the E3 Concourse Walkway, where he'll be giving away Drake's swag and tasty treats all week. So if you see him, give him a fist bump on my behalf. I'll take him now. Thank you very much, Webster. So if you have ever dreamt of spending a weekend knee deep in one of Earth's best gaming festivals, visit PCGamer.com forward slash Drake's Cakes. I want to go home. now for a chance to win and hang out with Webster. All right, Webster, all this hosting has got me a bit peckish. How about we look at a trailer for the next edition of Clay Entertainment's beloved survival series, Don't Starve, Hamlet. He's starving right now. <laughs> what the fuck was that about? Oh, no. <sighs> Nothing like corporate sponsorship. That's very, very awkward. Guys, I'm gonna put that as my highlight for E3 this year. Uh, what was his name? Qu uh, Quackers, the, the, the Quack do Duck Bake Man. Yeah, he was the best. What the fuck was that baking company sponsoring PC gaming? What do you think? They think like Drake from Blake's. Why are they selling cakes to PC gamers? I mean, I love cake, but I don't love cake too. I just eat next cake and next play it. Um, 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 um. Make me laugh. It's just cause four, and they have a brand new engine to bring the level of delicious insanity. One delicious like a, a cake. A what the Apex engine and just cause four can really do. Oh God. Interesting. Hmm. It was kind of, I don't know if that was like planned, but like you had a baking company say, hey, buy our fucking cakes and then don't starve. Eat more cake. Eat the fucking slop. Interact with their systems. Exclusive 4K sand. I hate sand. This is based on aerodynamics model. Deers. Four K wildlife and ducks. Bambi, we got Bambi. Twister. You want to get naked inside a tornado and J.O.? Joining me to talk about it on stage now from Avalanche Studios, it's Francesco and, or excuse me, Francesco Antolini and Adam Davidson. Gentlemen, welcome. I thought it was a bunch of Swedes at first. Talk to me about the tornado. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it? So it's uh, a very nice uh, piece of tech. It's not just beautiful, but thanks to Apex, it's also a bit boy that actually works. It's fully physicalized. Yeah. This means that it's roaming the world, wreaking havoc, and uh, it's not it's not just like a background piece. It's no, actually impacting no, no. the world. This is you. just cause, man. You go there, you play with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, throughout the trailer, there <laughs> seems, seems to be a lot of different okay. environments that are available throughout. Can you talk to me about those? Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the most important things to us with this installment of Just Cause was bringing a lot more variety into the game, and that extends to a lot of things, but certainly the biomes of the game. So instead of one kind of region of, like, say, southern Italy, like we had last time, now you have lush rainforests, deserts, uh, grassland, and even alpine biomes, uh, all of which, you know, are rendered beautifully with the new Apex engine. Now, something that's very important to me is some of my favorite features from Just Cause 3. Can you talk to me about, like, the wingsuit and the grappling hooks? Like, are those coming back in Just Cause 4? Everything you love from Just Cause 3 is back. Good. But Good. everything is also yeah. it's just better. There's more to do, more to discover. For example, the grappling hook is completely custom customizable. Oh, it's uh, customizable. The combat model has been completely reworked, redesigned, everything? enhanced, or new weapon, mm -hmm. new enemies, uh, new AI. Uh, we've got extreme weather that yeah. interacts with I mean, Raplino does, and yeah, uh, parachute. Right? The wind that we saw from yes. the tornado, is it just yes. like basic wind effects also get incorporated as well? Again, it just goes, so nothing, just an effect. So there is wind, it's physics, and acts with your parachute. He sucks. So yeah. well, wait, what accent is that? I think he's Italian, guys. We'll call first-hand footage of what Just Cause 4 can deliver. Uh, they can check it out at justcause.com forward slash E3 in, uh, for three days. And this guy's from Russia. That's right. Believe it or not, E3 hasn't started yet. <laughs> Starts tomorrow, so yep. June 12th through 14th. You can check it out. Thanks so much for joining Thanks us on stage. I look forward to the hilarity of Just Cause 4. Now, our next title is <laughs> one of my all-time favorite IPs. I can't wait for Frankie to talk to you about The Walking Dead. Overkill Whoop. Software and Starbreeze are the creators of Payday and Payday 2. Is it just, just me or is there nobody in the crowd? Like there's just some, some, some guy who wanna sleep on the on the shooters. He just walked and in. It's so barely anyone here. Familiar but new apocalyptic Washington DC. Here's the first gameplay footage for Overkill's The Walking Dead. People are like memeing on their phones and like you know. I'm not sure. All right, well, they're waiting for the in-between announcements. So what, they're just taking naps in- Oh, Starbreeze for Sweden, too. All right. There are so many things. Husbands and wives, doctors and teachers, writers and architects. But when the world ended, all that ended, too. Every day, we fight for more than survival. We fight to build a new life. This looks, uh... Wait, is this the Left 4 Dead game nobody wanted? Uh, not Left 4 Dead, fuck what I'm saying. A Walking Dead game that was like... Somebody compared like the Telltale games that was like great to just this like FPS garbage. But together, we might stand a chance. What about space exploration pirate zombies? We gotta have that with loot crates and battle royale. Guys, I'm dropping hot fucking memes tonight. And I have more good news <gasps> for fans of The Walking Dead. Overkill's game for The Walking Dead, of course, coming soon, but we have a second, completely different Walking Dead game that we're getting the chance to talk about right now. <laughs> well. This is Telltale's The Walking Dead. I was just talking about this. Season. Joining me on stage to talk about it is the lead writer, James Windler, and the voice of Clementine herself, Melissa Hutchison. There she is. I, I mean, what? John. Thanks for joining me on the stage. Our pleasure. Thank you. Now, I, I want to ask right away for you know people who played through the first three seasons of the Walking Sorry, I Dead. Drop my hair, boss. Gameplay. What's some of the familiar? I'm going to the new. Okay, so for people who don't know Telltale, um, we are a story-based company. Um, we do we focus Gosh, I on drop narrative. Drop a piece of hair on the floor. Uh, we've had our roots. In, I can't find it. Um, Fuck. The, the old school point and click adventure games, but we've developed our own cinematic style. I stole my hair, and, hang on. Um, almost a signature um, mechanic, like our choice wheel. Yeah. Um, and that's that's all familiar. Um, that's Who took it? You know, the choices branch the narrative. Um, 
What's new this Tell year? Tell us my we Haribo. Have, um, like traditionally, like combat and action. Oh, what the fuck? Um, we've done with QTEs. Well, God damn it. And, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> like swipes and and button mashes and all of that. This year, um, with the final season, we're we're um, introducing uh, segments of unscripted combat. Yeah, see, we see some of this right here. Yeah. So Clem probably just brutalizes zombies. <laughs> <laughs> of course she is. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. uh, so we also have I'm back. Like, the, um, the orbital cam, like the over the shoulder <laughs> camera. Um, so that's like offering our players. Um, uh, they took my pizza to and now they took my Haribo. Which you can also see from the B, the B right. roll um, is like they're looking really, really good oh, with this yeah. graphic, bla um, graphic black art style that we're employing. Yeah, because in the previous games it was much more of a directed camera from scene to scene, but now you can really sort of explore Dwayne? the environment on Dwayne? Your Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. What the hell is now, Dwayne doing this? About the story. I mean, Telltale games always have that as the central feature. Dwayne, Where does the, the walk later dead years. Final season start off. Okay, so it starts. Um, we've, you know, Clementine has been on the road for a long time. Dwayne. We are post time jump in the comics. Mm -hmm. um, she's been on the road. She's traveling um, with uh, uh, AJ. The ants say thank boy, you. Well, I say um, fuck who you. Is the closest <laughs> thing that she has to family. Um, but they're reaching the end of it. They are like running out of steam on the road. It's like proving to be untenable. Um, so um, the final season, Clementine uh, discovers a, a, a school, a secluded school um, where there are no adults um, and essentially sees that this might be a place that they could call home. Yeah, and what are the sort of challenges that she's going to face throughout the season? Oh, all kinds of challenges, yeah. yeah. Like zombie threat all the time. Tough. Yeah, of course. Um, and then there's always the external threat. Like the, uh, at some point, there are going to be adults coming in um, representing external threats that she's going to have to deal with. Now, Melissa, I, I want to ask what your experience has been like, because it's rare to have you know, a voice actress journey along with yeah. a character in a multi-year I sure feel bad for the other the uh, recording that you game. Did? Well, I, it was 2012, but we might have even started in 2011. I don't know. We're not going to do math on it. Yeah, That's we're not always doing a bad math. idea. That's not happening right now. So here's this, here's this um, great preview for a new game, and the other one's just like, yeah, this is a zombie shooter. It's ah. actually been aging with her, growing with her, and uh, falling deeper and deeper in love with her, and, uh, you know, starting as this young child who's you know as playing as lee it's your job to protect her and then organically moving through all these seasons and now yeah. you're playing as clementine i mean really this is a fan driven game so this final season is for the fans and you know you're gonna be playing as clementine and protecting aj and uh this is just near and dear to my heart and yeah, I mean, yeah. how do you feel about the fact that this is the end ah, well <laughs> well i mean it's bittersweet i'm super sad i'm super psyched uh you know i'm of course it'll it'll be sad to end her journey yeah. but uh i i'm really looking forward obviously i'm surrounded by talent with telltale games and i have no doubt that the writers and the creatives are going to crush it so <laughs> sad, happy. hey now hey now stop with, right stop now. with my Let's dumb isms well, someone who's played through all of the telltale walking dead games i'd love to know crush when it. the final season is coming out august 14th um yeah we ship yeah. august 14th it's available for pre-order right now be sure to check it out thank you so much for joining me on stage thank today you. once again that's the walking dead game.com <laughs> or you can find it on steam as well he looks tired. For our tired. next title, Frankie, we're going to head for our next title. on the balcony. Next up, have I got a treat for you. Coming straight out of Finland from Nola Games, it's a magical uh -oh. action roguelike that asks, is that a wand in your pocket? Are you just trying to kill me? Don't let the retro art style fool you. Noita is set in a procedurally generated world where every pixel is physically simulated. Let's take a look. Usual, this is my home in Machinate, the 5 million, and it's between mix between hydraulic press and pneumatic cannon. So, crush and stings, but the piston comes down really fast. It's a bit different, and we are going to do this one video on hydraulic press channel, and rest of the videos on our second channel, Beyond the Press. And to
Neat. I've seen uh, sort of the uh, the dust particle games before. Like that's very interesting. Heart, interesting when, when people do the uh, yeah. Cortex Command comes to mind hospital. a little bit. Joining me to talk about it are the two founders of Two Point Studios to talk about Two Point Hospital. Join me in welcoming Dr. Webley and Dr. Carr. The Dr. Pepper, is that you? Wow. Dr. Pepper Great is back. Suits. I know, I gotta ask, as two fully trained medical professionals, how does one run a hospital in Two Point Hospital? Well, what's going on with the bike? What's going on with the bike? Wait, oh my gosh, is the stethoscope eliminating your microphone? Oh, you know what? What? Every year, come here, talk to me. Okay. How do we run a hospital? Oh my god. Designing and uh, building. I thought it was a joke. Yeah. Talk directly at my tie. Oh my god. Yeah. I gotta look out here, you said. Yeah, no, just look straight at the ground. There's a lot of customization. Oh, oh no! At all. Yeah, it's great. Uh, oh yeah, no! I'll carry on then. Uh, yeah, a lot of customization, a lot of interesting characters in our world, which uh, oh. with all these different characters, we had to come up with some really interesting illnesses and cures for them. And uh, you have fun oh. in Two Point County exploring different regions and curing people with different ailments. Good and save, though. Good screen, fucking save. Got, so, this is real. We actually uh, researched this. It's uh, mm -hmm. a certain anima. And also you can train people. Uh, you can uh, train your doctors to be better. Good your save. To be better. Good save. Do research so you can unlock new wonderful cures. Yeah. You know, You're saying everything, isn't it? Sorry, yeah, I didn't no, know my mic was working. That was a bit backfilling. Carry yeah, on. so I mean, no, no t tell me about it. Like, <laughs> what is Show more the of them sort together, of late please. game? Yeah, uh, sort of experience be, that you'll be we'll playing through because it looks like it's quite deep into the running of a hospital. Yeah, this is later on. So uh, oh, it works now. Okay. And you're, you're, you know, you're, you're researching and you're, you're training up staff. You're diagnosing illnesses, and uh, you're hopefully curing them and making money, and then. Yeah, how, about, how about you cure my ear malady. damage after that? Yeah, I see this malady called I have no ears left. Head. Can you explain oh, yeah. a little bit about what that is? <laughs> yes, yes. It's, it's when the head becomes so shrunken. It gets stuck in the neck. Shrunken. Office, just pops out slightly. And uh, it has to be uh, extracted. Who here thought that was me and, fucking uh, with you? How, yeah, well, extracted? this is uh, something you've. <laughs> maybe uh, we've all had. We've all been there, I know. Uh, yeah. this is right, where, uh, tons of fucking people. You know, a little bit of suction always helps. So, oh, you, don't, yeah. you don't know when the jokes begin and end, huh? And out it comes. <laughs> yeah. No, we I, had to research how to do that. That's actually a, a real illness. For yeah, it is. It's real. England. Now, I, I had to ask about something that I think every young man has to deal with at some point. What, what is a monobrow infestation? Yeah, well, monobrow is, you know, follically enhanced. enhanced. Yes, yeah, so yeah. problem. We've, We've all seen, seen that. Yeah, uh, no, I haven't. No, but, OK. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, it needs to be <laughs> diagnosed and cured pretty quickly. If it does Honestly, it I, th fester, I think them fucking up and, made this uh, kind of quirky and fun to watch. Uh, a bit of hair. I mean, in fact, uh, it just needed a little bit to alleviate it, a little above, and now and I kind of like them. Got rid of uh, before yes. the health inspectors arrived. It looks like the <laughs> monobrows are multiplying in the hospital. They, they breed very, yeah, they're big breeders. The monobrows, yeah, they like, monobeasts. Uh, they like Joe, you gotta play this. You guys want me to play this? I'll fucking play it. Disgusting. So you have gotta keep your hospital clean and well maintained. Yeah. Otherwise, they're and gonna breed. Dr. I want to ask about sort of how back. the game evolves over time because you know theme hospital was very mission based how yeah. does the experience of running a hospital change as the game goes on yeah so once you started your first hospital it's, you know, it's a pretty simple affair and then you move on through two point county there's different regions there's a cold region there's warm regions with uh, in fact, you know, contagious diseases <laughs> and you know there's, there's poor there's regions there's rich well. regions yeah yeah so we've got volcanoes yeah, yeah, yeah we've, we've got all got sorts of wonderful uh, weird effects can happen in different parts of the so world so you might struggle to manage your hospital empire because yeah. a volcano went off nearby yeah it's about spinning plates isn't it you've got everything set up nicely and then something happens so. well i'd love to know more information mm -hmm. about when two point hospital is coming out well, we're coming out to uh, fall, and uh, you can check us out by going onto our Steam page and hopefully wish listing. And uh, yeah, we're coming later in the year. We're told to say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm personally, again, really looking forward to it coming out. Thanks so much for joining me, yeah. Doctor and Doctor. Thank you. Thank talk you. about Two Point Hospital. As, as they're walking off stage. Now, our second battle.
Battle Royale game of the afternoon takes a fantasy RPG-esque bent, and you may have even seen it getting streamed on Twitch in the previous week. Let's take a look at High Res's Realm Royale. Oh. What? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so we're. I swear to fuck. I swear to fuck. Oh, this looks so bad. Oh, this is like shitty Fortnite. Shitty Fortnite with generic classes. Oh, this is, this is, oh, dude, this is fucking. Oh, that, oh. <laughs> oh no! Realm Royale is the executive producer at High Res Studios. It's Rory Nubro, aka I, I made Dry this Bear. game concept. Mr. I'm, I made Bear. this. What separates Realm Royale from other types This guy of should have been named Royale Chad, by the way. Gone. This is Chad. Question: So before you go up into the air to determine where you land on the map, you'll actually choose from a list of fantasy classes like mage or hunter or assassin, and specify a unique play style before you land. Uh, how do these different classes work? So the engineer will be more about bunkering down, putting up shields, putting down turrets. Oh, this is terrible! Look, look, look! Oh, uh, sniper rifle to take out yeah. targets. And you know, you know, you made it when people start to rip you off. And, you know, in some of the streams that I've watched, it also seemed like there were abilities, not just the loot and find stuff. Can you talk to me about how the ability mechanics work? Once you choose a class, it'll come. With oh, this a is shameless. And you'll actually be upgrading these during the match. This is honestly shameless. Lifestyle. And so, as you're looting abilities as well as armor. I'll oh, have you no fucking shame. Chests, okay. You'll start equipping that and determining the place <laughs> you want, and so you can just really specify. And, oh you know, no! You, you mentioned this a little bit. I've seen it on stream. Talk to me about. I mean, I, I never play Fortnite. I'm just looking I mean, at what the game looks like and how it like Fortnite and like PUBG and all that. Settle. We're really excited about this. So strewn across the map, there are. Chat saying this is really forges. good. And so once you go to the forge, so I, I I don't know. Loot you find I'm just well, I'm watching watching from and a very like first impression angle, like you know. Gear, very powerful pieces that everyone want. Yeah. Once you start the forge, no no it's not no. The forge and You're a lying chat. Like okay now 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 we have conflicting. So I know a conflicting chat of five thousand people arguing about it. On Steam, but I hear that you have some goodies people can check out that are. E3 exclusive. That's right. <gasps> free on Steam. We're actually out for less than a week now, and we were already number four on Steam charts. And this week at, at E3, through Mixer, if you stream on Mixer and you're playing, the streamer that gets closest to the Crown Royale will enter into the Mixer. hype zone, and so everyone will see you on. You'll be featured on the main Hypes page of Mixer. And you'll have a chance to win the Jailbird Chicken Skin, which is our first piece of cosmetic. It's a little chicken with like a little Jailbird like, yeah, prisoner outfit, just box around. Well. Yeah, and if you don't know the chicken mechanic, seriously, please look it up right now. Oh. Rory, thanks so much for joining me on stage to talk about Realm Royale once thanks, again. Sir. It's for free on Steam right now. Our next game is one that was shown at last year's PC gaming show, and Frankie has some updates of what they've Now, now watch the next game be a parody of Battle Royale, and then the next game is sincere. It's like jokes, serious jokes. It's like fucking, they don't, oh God. creature collecting indie inspired by Pokemon, Harvest Moon, and Animal Crossing. This fresh trailer features a first look at their unique combat system, along with plenty of cute ooblets and environments. Let's take a gander. Sigoi. <laughs> we got the mind streams. Well, isn't this the most adorable thing I've seen all night? A oh, double fine. They made uh, uh, full throttle, right? And the uh, psychonauts. Sorry. Now, sorry, I'm like five years PC old. Gaming show without a dash of strategy, which is why I'm delighted that we get the chance to share with you the next 
in the Anno games. Let's take a look at Anno 1880. Do you know in Italian, Anno is year? But uh, Anno, like it's a different inf inflection to it, it becomes Anus. Uh, now you know. Anus 1976. Wait, we did 776, sorry. Nineteen sixty-nine. They also made Grim Fandango and Brutal Legend. Oh, there we go. I wasn't too far off. Joining me on the stage to talk about it is the executive producer, Burkhart Ratheiser, and community developer Bastian Thun. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to the stage. I want to begin right away by asking, you know, for people who haven't seen or experienced the Anno series, what are these types of games like? Yeah, well, uh, Anno 1800 is um, a PC um, only um, real-time strategy game, and um, it's kind of uh, mixing um, who's dad is this together with um, economic simulation mm -hmm. and naval warfare. And at its core, it's um, it's a sandbox game. So um, you have a, a free, um, a vast amount of freedom yeah. to explore, um, to I hear that um, Swedish explore accent. the world and build huge cities. And I wonder if you could talk to me a little explore. bit about why the choice of the 19th century. It doesn't really sound Swedish well, though. The 19th century, is, it's such an interesting and rich More era German. that um, mm -hmm. there was so much um, um, happening in, in this era. Yeah. So we had uh, two... Um, industrial revolutions. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, major scientific inventions um, uh, and uh, also big social changes and also the, great, the creation of the big imperial That guy has not moved. So is he, is he really stuck in a hyper zone? Some of the elements that we'll get to see it's, from the guy was just like frozen. <laughs> in so it's, it's kind of for the player. It's There's a, a glitch on stage. You start you, with the first. He's in the hype um, zone. <laughs> He's in the hype zone. <laughs> Get him out. Yeah. Get him out of the hype of, zone. Kind of He's stuck, boys. The 19th century. So it's a kind of you explore everything <laughs> that kind of happened in, the, yeah. in, in this rich <gasps> era. And I understand that you have a very unique take on how to work with the community, how to gather feedback. I was wondering if you could talk Game to looks about great, what though. is. It makes me want to play Tropico. Union. Okay. So last year oh, there at we, go. we actually revealed <laughs> the game. <laughs> on Frozen. On, you know what? It's pre-alpha. Revealed the game. We invited the community to basically become a part member of our, of our uh, development team. So we launched our Anno Union platform. It's a place where we give constant weekly uh, updates on the current yeah. development and invite players to give feedback and basically help us developing the game. Can you give me like an example of exactly how some choices have been steered by the community? So there's a lot of different stuff we did. So like from uh, the feedback we got on our blogs and uh, focus playtests. We it's like players. Tropical, but not as good. So oh, okay. Feedback, uh, which I remember playing like the third game, second game at a friend's house. Of uh, uh, the game. Also, we heavily uh, expanded on core features of the game based on feedback. We said like, okay, that that's re really uh, seems to work. Players like that. So, okay. Let's do it, like, uh, improve the quality a little bit even more. Yeah. But um, they can also vote on actual game content. So we had a big vote for an AI opponent in the game, yeah. for a community creation contest where they could create their own island and stuff like this. And, and I understand that some of this mm -hmm. uh, footage that you're sharing right now is pieces that people can go to anno-union.com and vote on right now. <gasps> exactly. So right just in time for E3, you can go to anno-union.com, check out. We have a vote up where you can vote on one of five ships in the game. <gasps> and that's only the first stage, because in the second stage, we will allow you to design your own ship variant. So the winner of that uh, first vote, then you can design, hand in your own design nodes, drawings, 3D models, whatever you like. No and way. The winner of that contest will actually make it into the game. What? Now, where is the website? That's incredible. To get the most what is he talking about? Right now. Yeah, just check out anno-union.com. That's basically our big community platform, and we want to, to invite especially strategy gamers, PC players yeah. out there to come help us developing the game, Guys, sharing feedback. Just check There will out. be no dick ships well, submitted, okay? Talk about anno I'm telling you right now, Our next time I'm going to be very sad to see if anybody submits a dick ship. 
is going to be talking about it. Please do not bit, submit a dick ship to the expect. game. Publisher Tiny Build is known for discovering distinctive indie developers and bringing their quirky ideas to the fore. With Cluster Truck, Speedrunners and Hello Neighbor among their catalog of hits. And now I'm delighted to be able to bring you the world exclusive reveal of a game developed by Galvanic Games in cooperation with Explosion. Her shirt Inspired was really by bothering the cyanide me. Like, and happiness webcomic, it broke. She rejects his battle royale as you've never seen one before, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, stop Believe it. it or not, top down, isometric, cartoony, and basically bonkers. Let's take a look at what happens when the man upstairs makes an epic fail and Guys, only up the bad people. Player knows ruined the fucking rejects. world. Here we go. Wait, I know these guys. I've, I've seen this fucking webcomic Dear ages God, ago. Every day I strive to be closer to your light. I pray that when Judgment Day, that most holiest of days, comes upon us, when you bring all the good people to heaven, that I may live in eternal glory by your side. Amen. Hmm. It's pretty funny, but it's not stolen enough. There we go. Thanks, bro. Yes, I played a game called uh, Survival Crisis Z. It reminds me a lot of that. Harold, get down here this instant! You didn't wake the leaves. Smell you later, you old s pig. <laughs> <laughs> so like, po like postal, postal one. We got to show that trailer. That's so great. <laughs> Wasn't that hilarious? Well, anyway, Our back to the game next that game here. Showcasing this evening is from perhaps the most <laughs> famous stealth action franchise in gaming, the Hitman series. Let's take a look at a brand new trailer from Hitman 2. <laughs> there he is. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Sweden? The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox. A day of high octane I love the Hitman games. I'm glad they're still making them. Targets. Make the world. You're open with fish. Nice. Man, too deadly. My voice is getting like worse and worse when I'm doing this. Like it's getting so stupid. Joining me to talk about Hitman 2 is game director from IO Interactive, Jacob Mickelson. Join me up here, Jacob. I wonder if he's going to look like Hitman 2. Come on out, we got to talk. Uh, Connor, he, he's kind of bald. Hey, it's Hitman Welcome, with a fake Jacob. beard. Thanks for joining me. I mean, right away, tell me, what is Agent 47 doing in Miami? Well, he's there to uh, yeah, pay a visit to Sharon Robert Knox, who is uh, part of the Kronstadt uh, Empire. And yeah, we all know how that ends, right? 
<laughs> well, given that it's a Hitman game, I have some hints. And, you know, I always felt like in the Hitman games, the environment was so critical, trying to study and trying to understand. I, I hear some, some Danish in here. In Miami that will show up in Hitman. You will only yeah. speak well, Danish on the uh, server? one of the biggest events we've ever created in, in the game. And, no, uh, this is Danish Miami, server? Have, of course, the race as the centerpiece. Yeah. But being this super high detail sandbox, we also go to great lengths to actually create all the surrounding uh, bits and pieces, uh, like you have here, backstage area. Of yeah. course, we also have that in Miami, so pits and paddocks, there's an emergency room, and so on. So all the facilities needed in order for you to kind of make your own way through the yeah. mission and take advantage of the locations and all the different disguises and items you stumble upon as you yeah. move in closer to your targets. And in terms of the mechanics, I know that there's going to be a lot of the familiar feels, but what are some of the brand new mechanics that are in Hitman? Yeah, some of the new stuff is, uh, for instance, uh, the crowds we saw so here in Miami. Uh, yeah. First of all, there's more than ever. Yeah, uh, huge. There's, we're close to 2,000 people now in the scenes. And uh, on top of that, we also introduced a new crowd mechanic where you, uh, you can dip into the crowd if you get in trouble. So as long as they are not uh, fleeing or running away, then they're there for you to hide in, so in case you get chased by guards. Another new thing is the picture-in-picture -picture, uh, mechanic where you get information right. about what's going on other places in the level. So if you're setting up traps and stuff like that, you can kind of keep track of where the important characters are. Uh -huh. And last but not least, we have fun a video. fan favorite, right. which is the sniper briefcase uh, is back. But this time it's not only for, br for sniper rifles, it's also for all the other things you want to carry around kind of without causing too much attention to yourself. And I want to ask about some of the weapons and the disguises that have been showing up throughout these trailers. Yeah, we go to great lengths. I think the, the, the theme of, uh, of this showing is going to be the fish. It's really uh, it's a studio favorite. Uh, we, <laughs> we're having a, a lot of laughs uh, at yeah. that, right? And then, <laughs> And then, of course, you just saw it in the kitchen. There's a frying pan, so we all know the kitchen is the most dangerous house, uh, room in your house, right? Yeah, so, yeah, of course. Also counts in Hitman. And I, I want to ask about some of my favorite content from Hitman, things like elusive targets, limited time events. Will those be making a comeback? Absolutely. So there's still going to be escalations for you to kind of challenge the game in many different ways. Uh, there's going to be uh, challenge packs. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, new challenge for you. And then, of course, the elusive targets that pop up for a short period of time only, and you have one shot at... Uh, he's doing that completely. What's going on? What? what? Oh, yeah. so As my final question, the huh? expected question, but, but, when does up, Hitman but. 2 come out? Hitman 2 comes out November 3rd, November 13th. Fish. Oh, and fish. If you're yeah, okay. right now, you also get access to a new game mode called Sniper Assassin, where you get to play as Agent 47, and also, for the first time in the franchise, you can play along with a friend in the co-op mode. Well, Jacob, thank you so much for coming out. I'm super looking forward to Hitman 2. I might be the worst Hitman Get ever, but I try hard. Now, Jacob, I'm going to thank you, and I'm going to escort Spanish? you off to the right. So you're going to rush off this way, I am because coming you. from the left, this is for the Danish first time ever, ever. vaguely nearby me, it's Sarah. the co-host Frankie. Like Come here, Frankie. Server. No, they let me go down the balcony for good behavior. Excellent. <laughs> well, Frankie, we did it. We the did. PC Gaming Show is done. Thank you so much for joining us to host this year. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for all of you who came out to the Will Turn and joined us today. It was a blast. Thanks to Twitch chat. I know that everything you said was appropriate and intelligently thought out. <laughs> and of course, this year, we're curating even more great PC games Got from the you. Facebook booth in E3 South Hall. Last. And of course, not least, a huge thank you to all our wonderful sponsors who let the PC Gaming Show come back for a fourth straight year. Shout out to uh, Doc. Hi Res Studios, Digital Extremes, Archangel Hellfire, Team 17, Stardock Entertainment, Acer, dropping Predator, it, dropping Improbable, it, dropping Oculus it. Rift, Drake's Cakes, making Tripwire, it, making it, making Frontier it. Developments and Square Coach C Enix. We hope you have the a microphone. wonderful E3 and go play some damn video games. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> No, this is a Danish server, not American. It's Danish. This is a Danish server. Go away with this server. Come on! Fire! Fire City with T. Shoot the terrorist. American. Uh, you can see him. Okay, he's, he's jumping around. All right. Anyway, so that was the PC gaming show. Pretty fun. Uh, it was pretty fun. I, I would. I'm. I'm gonna say something really ridiculous here. I'm gonna say that. Um, I forget what her name was, but she was really professional. Like it was very odd to see someone that was like, not at all kind of like, 
I, I, is that weird? Like, she was very, uh... Professional, as opposed to what it usually is. Like, usually it's like... Hey, hey guys, it's time to go, go, go in the video game zone. It's sponsored by PPP Pizza. And, uh, um, but she was like, hey, guys, check out this next preview. And it was like, odd, you know. Very good presenters. Yeah, but I think the highlight of this was the doctors. The doctors that... Oh, sorry, hair in my mouth. With the microphones fucking up, that was that was funny. Uh, it was pretty good. Star Control. I flipped my shit when I saw Star Control. I was actually super happy about it. Star Control. Fucking Star Control. Um, so, amazing. Wow. Wowee. Fucking Star Control, guys. Star Control 2. It's my favorite, or well, one of my favorite games of all time, to see this game. But apparently, there, there's some crap involved with it. Apparently, the original, uh, the original Star Control developers are now doing their own game. Was a new team is doing Star Control Origins. So there's a bit of a hmm. But uh, you know, cool, interesting. And we got Yakuza on PC. Great. Uh, awesome. So now the people that don't have a PS4 can finally play Yakuza. So that's great. Uh, Sega's really been uh, been kind to the PC uh, players, which is great. We got Bayonetta on PC now. We got, uh, you know, all that stuff. And we have Poyo Poyo on PC. And fucking Yakuza Zero and Kiwami. So, fantastic. Um... And I see Dryax has been spamming uh, Yakuza does not belong on PC for around an hour. Same message for every 10 minutes. So I say this is a success. Uh, it's, it's making Dryax mad. So uh, I'll be going to sleep with a smile on my face tonight. Um, but uh, what else do we have here? Uh, hmm. What else was, was of the North War? I, I li really like that one game with the sand. Yeah, I know memes aside. Um, thought it was really cool, good looking. Uh, I like. Uh, I was talking about in the other game with the sand. It's sort of like sand cortex command physics. Like that too. Real interesting. Um, really, a lot of good stuff here. Uh, now, just because we just saw Ubisoft, I was about to say Starlink. So I'm like, did you guys see that Starlink is on PC now? So we're gonna have a crossover with Nintendo on PC. But I'm like, my brain's turned to, turned to mush. Sony's in one hour. Oh my god. Guys, I'm chafing here. Fuck, guys. I'm... <sighs> guys, help me. There's so many fucking video games. I I'm sick of video games. Guys, I need a break. I need a break. I need a break from all of this. I need a break. Oh my fucking god. <sighs> I'm chafing. I'm dry. I'm dry. <sighs> okay. I'll tell you what. Sony is in an hour. Uh, and I'll be covering that too. And I've got an hour to take a break. Um, so, uh, we have around 5,000 people watching the stream right now. I want to I wanna thank you all for joining me of all streamers to watch the PC presentation. I know I'm not the best at covering E3 because I'm not I'm not really a professional when it comes to like covering these games and I really have no no expertise in the uh, field of video games. I just offer kind of my own little funny hee hee ha ha's and shallow dumb uh, first impressions on games. But for what it's worth I want to thank you all for tuning in and uh, participating in the chat watching with me. I you know I I guess I pride myself at being unprofessional in a way, weird way, but uh, yeah, but you know, um, I hope you've been enjoying so far what I've been doing. Uh, we did yesterday, we did uh, Electronic Arts, Microsoft, and uh, I missed Square Enix, however, today. I don't know what happened to Square Enix, but I do know that they did not talk about anything Final Fantasy related, which was funny because Square Enix. However, they did talk about Dragon Warrior or Dragon Quest, which is funny. Um, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a fucking hilarious joke here, guys. Uh, let me get my laugh machine. Okay, uh, I was saying that. Uh, thank you all for joining me watching E3. Uh, I'm not a professional, but then I'm not gonna say. Then I'm gonna say, and here's the joke, right? 
neither are the people at E3. <sighs> well, I think so far my favorite one has been been Bethesda's. Bethesda, like, say what you will about Todd. You know, and we shit on Todd like fucking every stream, and Todd is like a joke at this point, but. But I gotta say, out of all people that's on stage, Todd has some, like, stage presence. Like, when Todd's on stage, yes, it's a bit of a meme, and yes, it's a bit of a, you know, a, a jerk him around and stuff like that, but when talk, when Todd is talking, like, he he generally has a love of video games and to create them, and he's, he's like, indulging the audience into, like, hey, I have this new thing. It never feels like someone that just goes on stage be like, I made games? Here's games? You know, um, but uh, yeah, years of years at the chess club has shaped him into who he is. But um, uh, he is also a charlatan. He is a a false god, and he is he has rolled a ten in charisma. Uh, he will he will lie and deceive you. Don't believe his lies. <laughs> all right all right boys boys and gals i'll be off now uh but i'll be back to cover sony so this is an excellent opportunity to take a pee pee poo poo if you want and uh go eat some food or something uh fred is streaming a little bit of discussion so go, go talk e3 with fred i'm sure he'd love to hear your opinion and thoughts about it and give fred some love tonight but check out the rest of the vine sauce team in the meantime at vinesauce.com twitch.tv slash team slash vine sauce twitch.tv slash team slash arby's to find more spicy streams but i'll be back with sony later on and uh yeah uh coolio coolio made gangster's paradise and uh Fuck it. This is how we, this is how we end tonight. Or, or, or this stream. And then I pick it up later. But uh, alright. Well, I'll see you soon. Uh, I'll be right back. Less than an hour. And Sony, baby. We got Sony. And I'm really excited for that. So, got that Spider-Man. You know. Anyway, peace out. Television watching got me chasing dreams. I'm an educated fool with money on my mind. Got my tin in my hand and a gleam in my eye. I'm a low out gangster, set tripping banker. And my homies is down, so don't arouse my anger. Fool, death ain't nothing but a heartbeat away. I'm living life do a die. What can I say? I'm 23, never will I live to see 24 the way things are going. I don't know. Tell me.